Hello, I'm Rick from the Homesteader Store. This is another in our series of Equipment for Rookies. Today we're going to look at the proper installation of a PTO shaft. Now, a PTO shaft is one of the most dangerous things on a farm. More people are killed by power takeoff shafts than anything else on a farm. And that is because they do not operate them properly nor install them properly. They are actually quite safe if everything is in place. So the first thing you want in place on a power takeoff shaft is you want the protective shield. The protective shield rotates independently of the inside shaft. Notice as I'm turning the outer shield, it turns easily um, and independently of the inner shaft. That keeps things from getting wound in the shaft, such as coattails, beards, hair, all of which have gotten wound in PTO shafts and the PTO shaft is not going to stop. The second way people get into trouble is the improper installation of it on the tractor. If this comes off during operation, it's spinning. This is a 540 PTO shaft. This PTO shaft will spin and flop around and can cause uh, damage to the equipment and can cause harm to people. So we teach a four-step method in installing a PTO shaft. So to understand that, this is a 540 spline. As soon as you see that, that spline right away tells you this is a for a 540 RPM shaft. This has a cover on it, so let's remove the cover from the PTO. And you'll notice that the PTO shaft has the male side to this female PTO shaft. You notice there is a locking groove that is cut in the PTO shaft approximately an inch and a half onto the shaft. Now this is important when we go through our procedure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to state the procedure and then I am going to actually perform it. So we teach a four step procedure. Step number one is to align and start the housing onto the PTO shaft. Step number two is press the button slide forward. Step number three is slide forward listen for the click and step number four is to back check. Now if you notice that locking mechanism, in this case is a button, sometimes it's a collar, but that locking mechanism is about 5 eighths of an inch back from the front of the PTO shaft. So that means I can actually start this shaft without pressing the button or holding the collar. So I can actually put the shaft on and the first step is to align and start. So what I'm going to do, and there's grease on here so it slides fairly easily, I aligned this housing with that shaft and notice as I just turned it a little bit, it caught and slid on very easily. Notice the button is not depressed. So step number two is to press the button, slide forward. Notice I slide, slid forward just a little bit and now the button, I don't have to hold it anymore. So that's step number two is press the button, slide forward. Step number three is to slide forward, listen for the click, and notice that that button is now stepped out. If you have a collar, the collar will snap into place. So now I'm locked in place, but the four step is important where I'm actually going to back check the PTO shaft to make sure it will not come off. Again, when, if that comes off at 540 RPM, it can fly all over the place. So if I, when I remove the PTO shaft, just a little trick for you is what I like to do is I like to actually feel for the center of the groove because during operation, the PTO shaft is actually telescoping and when it telescopes, it can actually put pressure on the shaft, which will make pressing the button more difficult. So what I wanna do is move it in and out a little bit, press the button, and then remove the PTO shaft. Notice I don't have to hold the button. Once I'm outside of the locking groove, then I can just take the PTO shaft off. Now the last thing I wanna cover with you is something that's very important, that every time you put a new attachment on, now this is not every time you put it on, but when you put a new attachment on every time, you should check the telescoping part of the PTO shaft. The PTO shaft moves in and out, but it has a limit to how far it can collapse. If it is not cut properly, as you raise and lower the three point, it will actually collapse the PTO shaft as it should, but if it's too long, it will bottom out 
the PTO shaft to make it a rigid shaft. If that happens and you continue to lift the three point, you can actually push the thrust bearing out on the transmission in the, P, uh, the PTO shaft and significantly damage the tractor with a very expensive repair. So every time you put a new attachment on, put the attachment on and then run the three point up and down while you're observing it to make sure that the telescoping piece gives you at least an inch clearance here so that it doesn't bottom out all the way. Now again, you're looking at the shield, but the shield, if cut properly, will be cut like this, with the shaft sticking out approximately an inch past the shield. So you can telescope this down and you get a visual representation for a visual idea of where uh, that shaft is collapsing to. Again, very important because the damage can be significant to either the attachment of the tractor, normally it is the tractor. So double check that when you're installing an attachment for the first time. So now in review, the installation of the PTO shaft is important. First of all, if your shield ever gets damaged, replace it. It's not worth someone getting very, very hurt over um, if a shield is damaged. Second thing is the installation of it. The four step method, align and start, press the button, slide forward, slide forward, listen for the click. Step number four, back check. I would recommend that all the people that put a PTO shaft on your tractor go through this video and be schooled in all four steps to protect them and the equipment. So we thank you for joining us today in another in our series of Equipment for Rookies, and this is the installation of a PTO shaft. Hi, I'm Rick DeYoung. Thank you.